So I just had this long conversation with this guy about, about Trey, and we're trying to figure out who he is on the NBA floor. And so he said to me, he's like, you think he's, first of all, he goes, I'm not, I'm not positive he's a point guard. And, and that seems to be the consensus. Nobody's really sure that he's the guy you want making decisions um, at, at, you know, 30 minutes a game is your starting point guard. I think optimistically you're hoping if he is going to be, he's going to be like a Darius Garland. Um, but then the scout said, you know, I think of him more as a combo guard. Is he better than Anthony Simons? And so uh, I could kind of see Simons as a good comparison, but I think man offers a little more playmaking potential. He's one of the better graded as one of the better pick and roll players in the country. Um, but uh, to me, I think man's value is his shooting off the dribble, yeah. his floater game, his ability to create shots. You know, sometimes with man, I get a little frustrated because he's got the handle. He can shake and bake left and right and north and south, but he doesn't always use it, you know, the way it should be used. He doesn't always use it to, to create good shots for everybody around him. He's got a little bit of tunnel vision uh, and more of a scorer's mentality, which is fine. But I think if you, you know, when you're drafting him, you have to remember that he's, you can't really use him as the guy to make most of your decisions kind of like quickly like mm. quickly can make plays but you don't want him 30 minutes a game as your starting point guard you want him yeah. playing to his strengths as like a streak confident scorer and catch fire it's the same thing with trey and so i'm fine with taking trey man at 19 or 21 but with the idea that he's his job is to come in and and make shots yeah uh, and not really run your offense well, you know, it's it's kind of interesting because um, we, we see a lot of these guys in the league, right? Like more more the combo than the prototypical or, or straight playmaking type. Uh, and with the Knicks, and you've seen it with Randall. Randall took that step, and like I said, RJ certainly has potential. So it's kind of interesting there, you know, if they, if they took a guy like a man, if they felt like they would have enough playmaking, enough ball movement to, to really get the offense going because they could certainly use a shot creator there as well. Yeah, and you know, you wonder if Tibbs like is he does he really is he going to trust a rookie point guard, right? Or would he rather go after like you know pay five million dollars to get another Alfred Payton type, right. who is a veteran, who he you know Tibbs has he trusts those older guys to just you know push the buttons, just make make as many good decisions as possible. This yeah. kid's got lottery talent. Um, I mean, he's probably the shiftiest player in this draft. You know, he's going to hit you in and out, step back crossover snatch back, all all that stuff you yeah. know all the he's he's like the Kyrie generation yeah. right the guy the kids who grew up watching Kyrie do all this fancy ball handling and now he's emulating it and uh I don't know I, I look at these these shot makers in the playoffs and I just wonder how this kid's getting slept on so much because yeah. he's a kid who could hit step back or step back threes step back in his sleep Phil. he's hitting he's hitting logo jump shots mm -hmm. um and uh you know he's got uh, a little floater to his game too you know when when we contrast him with the two other guys we talked about he's not anywhere close to the playmaker of the other two guys but I think we've seen the NBA kind of trend away from that in a way you know I was saying how Sharif might be you know one of the last of a dying breed of kind of point guard and Trey Mann is kind of that new evolution of the position the guys who watch Kyrie the guys who watch Damian Lillard and Steph and um and are the the score first version uh, of the point guard and you know he's a kid who looking you look down the line and you're, he goes in the 20s and all of a sudden a couple of years we're talking about how did he slip because he's averaging 20 points a game shooting you know 40 percent from three so yeah. I, I like this kid's game and I think that bringing consistent shooting to this Knicks team is also something that they need and certainly from the point guard position um, you know uh, obviously him and him and quickly if you put them together that's a really dynamic shooting yeah, backcourt that problems, um that that could problems, put points on the board in a hurry you know yeah. so like like he's a kid and i think if you go and watch a trey man game I, the the last tennessee game is a really good one to watch because he struggled mm. in the first half so you see him when he's kind of struggling the player he is and then the second half he put up 28 points on uh tennessee with Keon Johnson, Jaden Springer, two of the you know better guard defenders in the class. Um, so you, you kind of see both, and and you see how quickly he could just fill that scoreboard up, yeah. right? So uh, he's he's a kid I really like, and you know going through my board when I'm, I'm putting it together, I'm just like, nah, I can't have this guy over this kid. I can't have. I'm just moving him up and up and up just because <laughs> he's got NBA skill sets. You know, like yeah. you, sometimes I think we look at these kids and the success or or the lack of success that they have in college and. We don't look enough at like 
well, does their game fit the NBA? Because the college game is not the NBA. Yeah. Half the time you're watching these games, and like you, you mentioned earlier, these these guys are – this team is sitting in a zone for the whole game. Mm-hmm. And NBA defenses aren't like that. So um, you put this kid in a bunch of high ball screens, and it's a wrap. He's he's knocking shots down all day. This kid can cook. He's, he's an absolute chef in the kitchen. And yeah. the ball handling, the ball control, uh, the body control, uh, I love it. Step back is filthy. I see. I, I've saw the, the McCullum comparisons across the, uh, across some of the, the draft boards. I can see that. I see a little D'Lo in him a, as well. Yeah. I know what you think. One hundred percent. Yeah, I see a little D'Lo in his, his in his game as well. And I just think, especially on the, the current um, make of this Knicks roster, we just don't have guys that can create much separation. We don't have guys that can can, can create many advantages. Outside of just knocking yep. down a jump shot where Julius is concerned. Yes, RJ can create separation through being physical, but he struggles a lot. He, he struggles a lot. And a lot of time he's forced into terrible layups or, or chucking up things that because he just can't create that separation. He doesn't have the foot speed. He doesn't have the handles. This kid has it. And as you said, you put this kid in a high pick and roll, he can make things happen for you, man. And really put some pressure on the defense. I like Trey Mann a lot. Trey Mann, yeah. Totally different kind of point guard, combo guard. Um, You know, probably one of the best off the dribble shooters in this draft. Uh, Good size of 6'4", 6'5". You know, his struggles is kind of getting to the rim and and athleticism and and kind of quick first step. Uh, That's one thing that he'll need to really improve on to kind of become a better scorer at the next level and not just have to rely on those step backs and sidestep shots that, uh, you know, he was hitting at Florida. Um, and again, not as skilled as a passer, but he, he can make the simple reads out of pick and roll. So, uh, you know, another guy that, that I really like for the Knicks. You know, some of the knocks I've seen with, with man is that, um, you know, doesn't finish strong, doesn't play physical. Um, what do you guys think about some of those some of those knocks that uh, that the crit- critics are uh, dishing out on man? Yeah, he's he's pretty skinny, um, so he'll definitely have to put on some muscle. Um, I think his finishing numbers were like right around average when you're looking at synergy. Um, I think he struggled a little bit getting to the rim, um, which you know it's not going to get any easier at the next level. Well, he does have a really good handle. Um, but a lot of those moves are kind of going side to side or backwards. Um, doesn't have that many, uh, you know, I mentioned the quick first step before he doesn't really have the the best bursts. Um, so when he beats guys off the dribble, it's more so for a pull up jumper and not getting all the way to the rim. So definitely something that, uh, he'll need to kind of work on is, is getting to the rim and, uh, even getting to the free throw line more, I think, will be huge. That's something that uh, Sharif Cooper really does well. What's interesting is at least the guys that I feel like are point guards, these are the two worst finishing guards right. at the rim. Right. Man <laughs> shot like 59.7% at the rim. Only one that shot lower was Cooper, which is concerning because man is, I mean, they had him listed at 6'5". I don't remember what the measurements were at the combine. But it's it's concerning when you have a guy that's six five, and he shoots below sixty percent at right. the rim, and I think that is directly related to his lack of explosiveness, the lack of first step. 